Sam Raimi. You strange, twisted, slightly sadistic, funny little man. How we've missed you. Every night, I dream the same dream. nightmare begins. While I am still thoroughly enjoying the journey of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I will be the first to admit that they have been struggling a little bit since Endgame. Black Widow felt a bit pointless because of its poor timing. Shang-Chi was… fine, which is not the recommendation you want for the reveal of your first big new character. And as much as I admired the grand experiment that was The Eternals, I felt like it should have been a Disney Plus show, where they could have fit all the expansive world building they wanted out of that concept. Speaking of Disney Plus, while they hit the ground running with WandaVision, as the shows have gone on they are starting to feel more like the land of new concepts and fixed plot holes, filling in a lot of the blanks there isn't the time nor the budget to set up in a cinematic release. And while a bad Marvel movie is often better than a good movie from other studios, a feeling of finding their feet again has been haunting most of Phase 4. Which is why it's been so great that the last two cinema releases have embraced one of the chief aspects that I believe the MCU was built upon. They're fun! Spider-Man No Way Home was a fantastic mix of nostalgia and new story, leading to a setup for a brand new direction for that character. And the film also led directly into this great big crazy fun blast that is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Now I'm going to try and be as unspoilery as possible, but there are a few things that can't not be talked about, so if you want to go in completely clueless, you've been warned. Multiverse of Madness sees Doctor Strange having dreams about alternate versions of himself, trying to save a young girl named America Chavez from freaky looking magical entities and failing miserably. So when said girl shows up for real, she reveals that she has the ability to travel in between realities in the multiverse, a power that sadly she has no real control over. Strange and Wong investigate and find out that the magical entities chasing Miss Chavez are based in witchcraft, not sorcery, which is a clever little separation of dogmas that had never occurred to me before. I mean, magic's magic, right? So Doctor Strange enlists the help of Wanda Maximoff, still dealing with the aftermath of the events of WandaVision. However, it gets revealed pretty quickly that the big bad sending all these dangerous entities after America Chavez is none other than… Wanda herself. Now gone full Scarlet Witch and desperate to get Chavez's powers for herself so she can bring alternate versions of her fake sons back with her from across the multiverse. Okay yeah that sounds convoluted as hell, but it's really not. In fact I forgot how much Sam Raimi hates bogging down audiences with setup, so all that goes past really fast. So much so that you honestly have a moment where you wonder if you missed a tie in episode somewhere. Speaking of which, this is the first time that the events of a cinematic release not only tie into a Disney Plus show, but it downright depends on it. If you haven't watched WandaVision, you are really going to be lost in this film. Wanda's character, costume, motivation and backstory were all set up in WandaVision. This is not a case of it makes more sense if you watch the other show, it would make no damn sense if you haven't bothered with a House of Mouse subscription. It's been nine years since we had a cinema release from Sam Raimi, his last effort being Oz the Great and Powerful, which… let's be kind and say not his best work. Since then he's done mostly TV and producing work. I think he must have regained some of his love of the medium in all that time, because we're getting some seriously old school Raimi here. There are some full on Evil Dead moments in this film, going as far up against the horror genre as Marvel dares and pushing the PG rating to its absolute limits. Sam's humour and playfulness seems very evident in a lot of places as well, adding a cheeky grin under a lot of the dark moments. 
And of course, it wouldn't be a Sam Raimi movie unless Bruce Campbell showed up for a cameo and someone was beating the ever-living shit out of him. Evil Dead 2 fans will appreciate who Sam chose to kick the bejesus out of his long-suffering friend. Visually, this film looks spectacular. Sam is playing with all the toys and isn't holding back. An argument could be made that they could have done more with the concept of the multiverse, but the turns they take seem to suit the story more than just giving endless different versions of the same characters. Rumours persisted of cameos by the likes of Tom Cruise playing Iron Man or Brad Pitt playing Thor, but it felt like anything of that magnitude would have been pointless fan service. What characters we did wind up getting, I'm trying really hard not to spoil things here, either set up casting for future Marvel installments, gave us comic accurate depictions of characters we may not get to see in their regular MCU versions, or gave us a respectful nod to what has come before. By the way, anyone who tells you that they don't have a massive celebrity crush on Hayley Atwell is lying to both you and themselves. Admittedly, some of these cameos would have been so much better to have been surprised by in the film, rather than have had them given away in the endless advertising. I was incredibly pissed off at having the inclusion of one particular character ruined for me in a thumbnail for yet another trailer. And no, it wasn't the one you're thinking of. Even though this is only the second Doctor Strange movie, this is the fifth time the character has been a major presence in a Marvel film. Benedict Cumberbatch is now so comfortable in the role, he cruises through scenes like he owns them. Most of Doctor Strange's character arcs have been developed in the previous films, so even though there is a small bit of character work done, the main storylines focus more on the new characters, allowing the good Doctor to get on with the job of being a superhero. Not only does this not take away from the story, it adds to it, dispensing with any conflicting narratives in the characters' journeys. Speaking of narratives, the young lady bringing America Chavez to life, whom I will not insult by trying to pronounce her name, does a great job as an overwhelmed teen being forced to deal with things above her maturity levels and out of her control. There's both a fragility and a strength to her character that at no point becomes tedious or falls into damsel in distress tropes. Benedict Wong returns as Wong, doing a great job as Strange's voice of reason, foil and conscience. Actually, him and Cumberbatch bounce back and forth, taking turns being each other's comedy relief and straight man, and it leads to some great interactions. Rachel McAdams plays two different versions of Dr. Christine Palmer, having seen enough versions of Doctor Strange that she can easily but compassionately put him in his place, which he sometimes needs. But I think the real MVP here is Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch. Her turn to the dark side feels earned, and her reasoning, although driven by grief, feels completely logical for the character. She's quiet, determined, and no-nonsense, which manifests itself as an almost terrifying level of malice. At no point does she descend into a Jack Nicholson-esque level of cackling evil. She knows what she wants and has no time for anyone who gets in her way. And best of all, there was no last minute attempt at a reprieve by claiming she was possessed or corrupted. She became her own monster and dealt with the consequences of those actions. As good a job as Scott Derrickson did on the last film in the series, you absolutely needed someone of Sam Raimi's visual absurdity to do this film justice. Sam has always been able to push the camera and visuals in a way no one else has ever been able to match. And unlike other visually compelling directors, whom I refuse to acknowledge, Sam has always been able to use those visuals to tell a compelling story with characters you honestly care about and whose journeys you want to be a part of. I had a blast watching this film. And where the most recent Spider-Man film had me with the nostalgia and the emotion that came with that, I think I enjoyed this movie more as it was very much its own beast. I was thrilled to have Sam Raimi back and to see him play in a sandbox that uses his abilities to their utmost. And I'm really glad that a movie I was excited to see lived up to its own hype. As I've said before, I have loved every minute of the grand experiment that is the MCU. And I will continue to show up for the lavish attempts to explore different themes and approaches such as the Eternals or Moon Knight, just as long as they continue to delight us with things that are big and bold and fun like this. I mean, we've got a whole multiverse out there now. Who knows what sort of wonders it could reveal to us?